Hello and welcome to the pages of Think Big, the book on motivation and leadership written by me. And uh, today's topic is to my fellow beings. And this is the part two of the chapter. Dear friends, Helen Keller once said, most pathetic person in the world is that who has eyes but no vision. Ironically enough, the educationists have ideas but no resources to put those ideas into practice. And education industry is being controlled by the people who have money but no vision for education. Evaluation should not be the test of memory but it should be the test of knowledge. We follow exactly the opposite methodology. Our evaluation system focuses in rote learning. Students pass unit test half yearly and annual examination and the students cram the answers accordingly. But if any cross question is asked, they are blank. Here goes one story about Albert Einstein and a cramming expert, Rosette. It was during the time Albert Einstein was in news because of his theory of relativity. He was called to deliver lecture far and wide. It happened once that Rosette crammed everything about the theory of relativity and he started delivering lectures in the name of Einstein. During those days, the photo cameras were rarely in fashion and very less people could have seen the photographs of the learned scientist. So, Rosette had a free say. He started earning fame and money in the name of Einstein, but as the great scientist got inkling of the conspiracy, he decided to attend one such seminar by the Duke. Everything was perfectly delivered, even better than the great scientist who was not a great orator. Now as directed by Einstein, a fellow sitting next to him asked Mr. Roget the question which was though related to physics only but not directly related to famous theory. Mr. Roget was a rote learner so it was obvious for him to get perplexed. He looked at the side where the question was bombed from and could immediately recognize Einstein. Mr. Roget started sweating but somehow could control his nervousness and switched his mind over to the philosophy that if you go wrong, stand by it. Your question is so simple gentlemen that it can even be answered by my secretary. You ask him, he is sitting just next to you, said the great dupe pointing towards the man who had asked the question. Anyway, but all our children cannot afford to do so in the examination if faced with such a situation. Now about ego and hostility. Dear friends, we should have more education so that we don't look down on people. This is true, especially for the people related to education because the first and foremost virtue that an educationist must possess is to have respect for all. Aggression can be of two types. Hostile aggression, in which we want to injure, hurt, humiliate and insult a person we know. And instrumental or controlled aggression, in which we want to hurt somebody whom we don't know. For example, war terrorism. The first type of aggression is undoubtedly bad, but the latter one is worse. Now coming to another topic, five lessons from geese on building a strong team. Dear friends, you must have all seen geese while they are flying. Now the question is why geese fly in a V form? People who share a common direction and objective can get what they want and where they are going quicker if they are traveling on the thrust of one another. If any goose breaks the V form and falls apart, it feels a drag or resistance of air and so moves back immediately to the V. 
if the entire geese move in v form it reduces 71% burden of every goose in this case every goose has to put only 29% effort if we have as much sense as that of geese we will stay together and in confirmation with those headed where we want to go so we all shall accept others help and offer help to others when what happens when the leader goose gets tired of flying it goes to the end of v where lesser effort is needed it is all about sharing the leadership mutual respect is a must among all members of a team now continuous and mutual encouragement the geese flying in formation keep on honking to encourage those apprent to keep flying team members encouragement and support to one another always motivates helps and strengthens members resolve and improves performance when a goose gets sick is injured or tired and has to leave the formation in that case two geese leave the formation and escort the injured or tired goose till it regains health or dies and then go back to their formation so let us stay together and support each other a true team work lies in helping one another what we can learn from the japanese dear friends there are 10 things which can be emulated from the japanese which are displayed during the course of their uh, disaster management first is the calm not a single visual of chest beating or wild grief sorrow itself has been elevated that is the first quality that we can learn from the japanese the calm second the dignity disciplined cues for water and groceries are there not a rough word or a crude gesture third one is the ability the incredible architects for instance building straight but didn't fall next one is the grace people bought only what they needed for the present so everybody could get something next the order no looting in shops no honking and no overtaking on the roads just understanding then is the sacrifice 50 workers stayed back to pump sea water in the nuclear reactors in japan how will they ever be repaid no they cannot be repaid next the tenderness restaurant cut prices an unguarded atm is left alone the strong care for the weak next the training the old and the children everyone knew exactly what to do and they did just that the media they showed magnificent restraint in the bulletins no silly reporting only calm reporters the conscience when the power went off in a store people put things back on the shelves and left quietly now my question to you friends is have you fixed up your objective in life the example from alice in wonderland wise cat is asking the question to alice where do you want to go alice i have not decided wise cat says so it does not make any difference which way you take that is the importance of fixing a goal for you in case if you have not decided then anywhere you can go but once you have decided then you have to go in that direction change you cannot change anybody except yourself you cannot change suddenly overnight change yourself 1% every day and you will change completely in 100 days three things friends three questions to be asked to oneself regularly what am i becoming here where will i arrive in 10 years from now how can i reach there please never do the self talk like what if i try and fail rather say what if i try and succeed three good attitudes learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job focus on your strengths not complain about your weaknesses 
five things which can be useful in all problems firm and consistent behavior that is self discipline teach children self monitoring teach them socially desirable ways never pay attention to and never appreciate a bad or undesirable behavior don't forget to reward or appreciate a good behavior six personal gifts to control your own destiny and stay great never give your power away you have six personal gifts to control your own destiny and stay great greatness is being responsible and doing what is expected of you to be in control of your own destiny you must be proactive life takes place in a decision when you take action to make something happen stuff is going to happen what to do about what happens after you make something happen is where you take control when stuff happens that you did not plan on that is opportunity knocking five personal gifts the first one is knowledge without knowledge you will have no power to take action build on the knowledge already you have learned knowledge is power observe listen and read smell taste touch practice practice and practice i am willing to listen learn and change how i think think big it does not cost anything to think big when you think big you are taking care of yourself when you think small you are focusing on your ego the self always thinks big second personal gift is grace you must request grace you must have permission from yourself without permission you will procrastinate you will sit and wait those who hesitate are lost third personal gift is authority you must enjoy your authority to say yes or no without authority someone else is running the show you are the authority in your life nobody thinks in your mind you are the center that watches and runs the show that can choose which way it will go i am consciousness take charge of your own destiny guess what now what fourth fourth personal gift is spirit you must nurture your spirit it is so important because it brings energy and excitement a spirit must grow because the opportunities will grow as times go on a spirit is the greatest unused power on earth music can put wings on the human spirit that is the spirit fifth personal gift is commitment you must strengthen your commitment to yourself without commitment there is no long term persistence persistence creates desire and builds knowledge knowledge must build because of so much opportunity one must have a heartfelt commitment in any endeavor one undertakes be committed to yourself the commitment you have to yourself is the commitment you will have to your family your profession your community love is a feeling of commitment commitment is a joining of forces six personal gift is opportunity you must seize opportunities realize that problems are only opportunities based on how you view them if you cannot do anything pray for someone else if you can't pray ask others to pray for you if possible do something faith without work is dead problems are sometimes opportunities for you to keep control of your own destiny tell me and i'll forget teach me and i will remember involve me and i will learn Thank you very much friends